Hello, welcome to another Kitchen Lab. I've had a request in through the website to do a Kitchen Lab on using red cabbage as an indicator from John. John, that's a great experiment idea and it's one that's a classic and there are loads of great videos on the internet that do similar things using red cabbage as an indicator to tell you whether something is an acid, an alkali or whether it's neutral. I had a look at those videos um, and I thought a lot of them required boiling or they required to have a blender and some of those pieces of equipment people wouldn't have or maybe they wouldn't feel comfortable using boiling water with their children. So I've gone back to the basic principles and I've made a video with a method that doesn't use any specialist equipment that you might not have and doesn't require you to use boiling water. I hope you enjoy it. So we're all set up for the classic home science experiment of using red cabbage as an indicator to show pH, acids and alkalis. This is a kitchen lab take on it, so I've taken everything back to the basic principles once again. So as long as you've got the required ingredients of some red cabbage and then something to make your solutions either acid or alkali, which could be bicarbonate of soda, some vinegar or some lemon juice, or you could even use lemonade then you'll be good to go with this at home. And it doesn't require any blending or any boiling water, so it should be safe for pretty much any age. The first thing that we need to do by following the example sheet we've got online is to put half a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate into one of the glasses. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Just half a teaspoon into the first glass. And then to put one to two teaspoons of vinegar into another glass. This doesn't have to be exact, just to give you a rough idea using the teaspoon. Two teaspoons there. You could of course use lemon juice instead if you like. What we're going to do now is fill them with some water to make some solutions. So I'm going to go just over halfway with these. And then I'm going to fill a third glass just with water to a similar level. So we've got three different solutions of unknown pH at the moment. This is just warm water. I genuinely just used the hot tap. I didn't have to boil this, uh, but the hotter the water is, the quicker this experiment will go. But obviously only go as, as hot as you feel as you feel safe. So once these are ready to go, we then need to move on to the next step, which is in step two. And we need to take one large red cabbage leaf. That should be enough. And we're just gonna break that up into smaller pieces. I've said to be about the size of a five pence piece, but Again, it's really not very important. We just want to break this up into small pieces so that we can split it between those three solutions. Great, we'll get rid of that bit because it's quite tough. And if we just split that into three separate piles that are roughly equal in size, all we're going to do is then put these straight into the different glasses. Now, depending on how warm your water is, this next step will take more or less time. I'm just going to give them a quick stir. Now, as this water isn't very hot, it might take a few minutes for you to notice that you'll get a colour change in these solutions. Now, ideally, when you switch between these glasses, you just need to wipe off the spoon so you're not contaminating all the different ones. Or you could just use three separate teaspoons, which would be even better because you definitely aren't going to be contaminating all the different solutions uh, that you've got. Now this might need to get sped up, but what you can see here is we've already started to get different colours. And if I put them onto this sheet of white paper, which is optional, but helps you to see the colour differences, you should see that we start to get an indicating colour change, and this is to indicate the different pHs 
the different acids and alkaline natures of the different solutions. So I've just left these ones um, for about five minutes. And as you can see, I've moved the camera just so you can get a nice close look at the color differences. Um, and on the far right hand side of the screen, you can see the neutral. This one was just water, so we've got a purple color. And the next one along we can see is red. This is the one that we put vinegar into. And the one further along from that we can see that one's blue, and that's the one that we put sodium bicarbonate into. We've moved back so you can see the whole experiment again now. So what we can do with this, if you use the uh, worksheet that goes along with this, the link for it's in the description and, it, and in the tweet as well, we can match the colours to the scale that we've got for the red cabbage indicator. If we match those colours up, we'll see that this purple colour, where we just had some water, is slightly alkaline. We'll see that this red colour, where we just had vinegar put into water, is a really st quite a strong red, so you can see that it's quite an acidic solution. And then this blue colour that we've got, where we added the sodium bicarbonate, is a slightly stronger alkali than just the red cabbage on its own. Water does tend to have a slight alkaline tendency, although we would normally say that it's around neutral. This is quite common, and if you get this in your experiment, that's absolutely fine. It's because of different additives that we might put into water uh, for drinking. So what's happening here? We're measuring the pH of different solutions with an indicator made from red cabbage. And the indicator is telling us how acid or alkaline a solution is by changing colour. This happens because the cabbage changes colour with different amounts of hydrogen in the water. And acids like to give off hydrogen when they're in the water, and alkalines like to take on hydrogen when they're in water. So by having acids and alkalines in the water, we're changing how much hydrogen there is there, which in turn changes the colour of what's in the cabbage. So from this, we can determine the pH of the solution. Now we should be able to then change the colour by changing the pH of the solution. And we're going to do that by mixing some of these different acids and alkalines together. But when we do that, we also need to know what's going to happen when we mix an acid and an alkaline together. And they will react with each other and they will release carbon dioxide in this case. And that's what makes drinks fizzy. And it should make whatever we're mixing together fizz up. So I've switched to a new glass so we can have a little bit less in there so it doesn't fizz over everywhere. I'm going to take the alkaline solution with the sodium bicarbonate in it, which is blue, and pour some of that into this new glass. And I'm only going to pour it about a quarter full. We can see that's blue, it's alkaline on the scale. <clears throat> now, if we add some acid in the form of this vinegar in there, we'll neutralise the acid. They'll both react with each other, the hydrogen will get given from the acid, taken by the alkali, and they'll react and they'll also form carbon dioxide. And forming carbon dioxide so quickly will cause everything to fizz up. should be able to see that fizzing just like if you poured a drink out from a bottle of uh, fizzy pop. And also you'll notice the colour change. So it's gone to a more red colour as we put an excess of acid in there so it's now become acidic. If we compare that to the original colour, we can see the original colour was blue from alkaline and now we've added the acid in, it's gone red because of that. So you can do this with lots and lots of different uh, 
solutions, as I said. You could try lemon juice, toothpaste you could put in as well. Anything that you're happy to put a little bit of into water and test the pH of. Whoa! 